So how do you get your mail? How do you vote? How do you live this life as cheaply as possible? In this video, we answer your most common questions about full-time RV living. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it can be challenging to live amazing if you're thinking about full-time RV living and you're trying to handle all the logistics of it all. There's so many questions that we get, such as... Yeah, how, do you, how do you get your mail? How do you vote? What do you do for your address? I mean, there's a lot of pieces to it and it can be confusing. So what this video is about is to answer all your questions and make it easy for you. And two years ago, Paul hit the road in October 2018 and you did all the research. I was looking at making this my full-time life. I thought, geez, what, what address am I going to use? I mean, I used my son-in-law's address for a while and had him sending mail to me when we got enough to, to justify that. But I didn't want to impose on him. And there's cheaper states too than California to have as your address. So we are going to go through all of it for the address, mail, voting, vehicle registration, the whole thing. So grab your notebook. This is going to be a really important video that will help you because if you're thinking about life on the road, it can be a little daunting to figure out the logistics of it all. So we've done the research and in fact for this video two years later we did the research again to be sure that all the information we have is up to date and yep. it is yep it sure is and uh it's still it's still the best system out there that that i have found that we have found mm -hmm. and uh saves you money makes it easy uh it's just set it and forget it so in doing our research there really is just one company out there that really serves full-time RVers and, and anyone that lives on the road and I'm talking about not just mail forwarding but registering vehicles handling all the details with address and residency and all of that and that company is America's Mailbox what is to follow is an interview that we had with Don the owner of America's Mailbox and he answers a lot if not all of the questions that you might have regarding living as a full-time RVer. My name is Don. I'm the owner and founder of America's Mailbox. Founded this company uh, well, about 16 years ago and we rented a, little, a simple little three-room office and we've just grown and grown and grown until now we're the, uh, the largest mail forwarding company for our markets uh, in the country. What made me, you know, think about it was, frankly, I'm, I'm a full-time RVer myself. I travel the country extensively. So the first decision to make is what state to make your residency. Yeah, this is going to determine what dr address is on your driver's license and your insurance rates and your your state, uh, income, state tax. income tax. All very important decisions that you have to make if you're going to do this full-time. You have to look at a lot of variables. Every state's got their hand in, in, in the people's pocket in one way or another. This state might not have a sales tax on vehicles, but they absolutely devastate people on personal property taxes every year. Or they just have other things that they charge considerably for. They're, maybe uh, it's not the state, maybe it's the insurance companies. Like for example, uh, you know, people on the East Coast and, and some other states, they get hammered on insurance. Uh, last time I looked, for example, uh, the people in Florida, they're the fifth highest you know, insurance costing state in the country. Uh, New York, New Jersey typically battle it out who's going to be the most expensive. Uh, number two is not far behind. Michigan is very high. Uh, then you got a lot of states with state income tax. Sometimes people will even consider opening up an LLC in Montana. Uh, and that used to be a good thing. It's not so much anymore. Several years ago, Montana started uh, what they call a luxury tax on motorhomes. And I believe that's around $750, and that's every year. Uh, some states are, are telling uh, their, you know, people that because it's a corporation, in order to drive that Montana vehicle, they need to have permission from the Montana Corporation but they also have to have the CDL, a commercial driver's license, mm -hmm. which most people don't have. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm being told. Washington, Oregon used to be good states. I purely speculate, in my opinion, I think California put a lot of pressure 
on, on those two states because California was having an exodus of a, of a lot of people moving their vehicles to Washington, Oregon. I suspect, and again, this is my opinion, that they uh, you know, succumbed to the pressure from you know, a state like California and they started raising up their rates. Uh, of course, you know, most of the time people will look at states like Texas, Florida, and South Dakota, which are all you know, good states, but the, you know, they, they have other problems as well. Florida being the fifth highest you know, cost in insurance, that's, you know, that's a pretty significant cost. Uh, Texas, last time I looked, was about the 15th highest. South Dakota is consistently ranked, and, and people can look it up. It's, uh, you know, they can go to iii.org. It stands for Insurance Information Institute. And South Dakota consistently ranks around 45th, 48th, 49th wow. or so, you know, lowest cost you know, insurance state in the country overall on, on a level playing field. And, of course, you know, some are higher, some are lower. But overall, South Dakota is very reasonable on insurance. Florida on the sales tax on, on you know, the sales tax for vehicles, uh, depending upon what county you're in, you know, it can be as high as eight and a half percent that I'm aware of. Plus, you pay uh, I believe they call it impact fee. Uh, that was something they started a couple of years ago. That's t- you know it, it varies, but it's around three hundred fifty or so dollars. In Texas, their sales tax rate is I believe around six percent, and they also have what's called a foreign vehicle tax. Uh, if you bring a vehicle into into Texas for the first time, you pay a well, kind of like Florida's impact fee. And of course, Texas has vehicle inspections mm-hmm. every year, every vehicle. And unfortunately, they don't fall the same month if you know, if you got multiple vehicles. So some people have to go down there in February and make another trip through in, in June or whatever. South Dakota, the tax on vehicles is only 4%. Mm-hmm. And that's based on net purchase. So if the person goes to a dealership and they buy a vehicle for, say, $100,000, obviously an RV or something, or cars or trucks, and they give the dealership a trade-in, they, you know, the, the, the money that gets applied as a trade-in is not taxable. So the only fee that they're paying the 4% on is the bottom number. So the purchase price minus the trade-in, and that bottom number is what you're paying the 4% on. Mm-hmm. And of course, besides having the, among the very lowest insurance costs in the state, we don't do state income tax, which is comes in very, you know, very good. Everybody here likes that. We also don't do vehicle inspections. So this is why we chose South Dakota as our state of residency. It was such a clear choice. And you can start right now setting things up. You can do almost everything online. So the one thing you might be wondering is, what do you have to do to be a resident of South Dakota? Well, you have to stay in the state one night. And a receipt from a hotel or a campground will suffice when you go in to get your driver's license. That's right, and that's why South Dakota is the clear choice because they're the easiest state that we know of to establish residency. And what makes it even easier is you only have to spend that one night every five years. Five years, yeah. You don't even have to drive in with your rig if you don't want to. You could fly into uh, Rapid City and get a hotel room uh, America's Mailbox actually has some hotel rooms that you can stay at. You can do this in basically one day. Yeah, yeah, that's what's so cool. America's Mailbox has campsites and a hotel, and we'll tell you more about that later. And you don't have to start with your driver's license. I changed my address and moved my all my insurance and everything over, and then a few months later, then I did the driver's license. Yeah, you can do your vehicle registrations all by by internet and mail and you don't need to be a resident to do your vehicle registrations. So now let's talk about address. It can't be a post office box. Driver's license will not accept that. They want a street address. Banks want a street address. So America's Mailbox uses a PMB, which is called a personal mailbox, and that satisfies about 95% of the banks. Now the ones that don't, then you can just give them an address of a friend as your home address and then still have your mail come to America's Mailbox. We'll talk about how you're a customer for life. Oh yeah, so once you get your PMB with America's Mailbox, let's say you decide you're a snowbird and you're, you're only doing this six, eight months out of the year, um, you can activate your account for that those six or eight months and then when you go back to your home, you can turn it off the next year when you do it, you get the same PMB 
the PMB is yours for life. Once you once you have it, it is yours. It won't ever be used for another person. And that's what's just so cool about that. Um, you know, it works for snowbirds. It works knowing that your address won't change. It's yours forever. Yeah, Don talks about um, truck drivers and airline pilots using this um, because they're constantly moving around. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's not just for full-time RVers like us. Yeah, it's anyone who's on the road that doesn't have a permanent address. And that's basically what America's Mailbox is giving you is a permanent address. And you have all these savings, too. They will accept anything sent to your America's Mailbox address, including FedEx and UPS. So let's talk about getting mail. Did you know that a lot of campgrounds will not accept mail? If you're going to be at a campground for two or three weeks and you want to have stuff sent there, they most often will tell you no. And here's why. Most campgrounds don't accept regular mail. Some will accept FedEx, UPS, and whatever. In mom and pop campgrounds, for example, they won't accept it at all. And the reason why is Bob, my apologies to Bob, but Bob might be staying out in the campground. And he orders a package from, I'm gonna pick a company, Bed Bath & Beyond. Bob gets his package from Bed Bath & Beyond. Bob leaves. Three years later, we're still getting mail addressed to Bob to the campground address oh, from Bed Bath & Beyond. Because they got your address in the system. Right. So that's the reason why. You know, some do, some don't. And some charge you, you know. Yeah, they're charging at five bucks a package a lot of places now. Sure. Yeah. And you got to understand from their point of view. Yeah, it's, it's manpower. It, it's manpower, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, they and have it's a, storage space. Yeah. Precisely. They, they have a liability issue. If they if they show they've accepted the package and it's not there for you know for Bob to pick up, right. now you got a problem. Some people will use UPS as their mailing address and we found through our research that's not really a great idea. UPS is a good company. I'm not bad mouthing them at all. They've been around for a long time. They're certainly stable and, and everything else. People have told me the problem that they experience with that is the UPS stores are priced rather excessively, you know, because you not only have to look at the at the package, you know, you know, I want to have my mail go here and so on. You have to look at what they charge every time they send the mail to you. I've heard anywhere from five to ten dollars servicing fee for servicing every fee. package, every package plus the price of the shipping. That's just to handle the mail to get it to you know to the UPS driver. Now, if you're wondering, America's Mailbox will, will accept and ship anything to you, regardless of size. That's right. We had a whole bicycle sent to us, mm -hmm. a hitch. They will do it. And here's the other cool thing is you get to pick when you're ready to have your mail sent to you and how. You can choose slow or fast. And how do you get it sent to you? You can have it sent to you via general delivery. A lot of times people don't understand what general delivery mail is. This is a service by the post office, and it's available all over the country, and it's a free service. So say, for example, you, you know, the, the customer happens to be in some little town in Utah. They address their mail, care of general delivery, city, state, and zip. You know, every town has general delivery, but there's only going to be one general delivery. It may be uh, in that specific town, or it may be a town that handles you know, a postal that has several towns, but there's only going to be one general delivery address. Do you have so, to call and find out? Usually, if you're staying at a campground, they don't accept you know uh, mm -hmm. U.S. mail. They will know who, what the general delivery mail address is. The post office will hold general delivery mail for 30 days. And America's mailbox also has a scanning surface service. <laughs> service. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, our customers actually have two options. One is we call our traditional mail forwarding, and the other is our, is our, our scanning. The mail comes in, uh, and we scan the front exterior of all first class mail and above, you know, whether it's uh, you know, first class or priority or packages, you know, whatever. And then we take the image, and we put that image of that, of that uh, package or piece of mail, and we put that on a secure web server. Secure is the operative word here. We don't want anybody hacking into our sites. And, 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 and we've never been hacked into. We've never had a problem. And, I, and we get alerted every time somebody tries to. That's one of the benefits of the website that we have. We get an alert that says, hey, you, know, you're, you, know, you have an attack. We've never had, you know, had a breach, and we never will.
We're, we have very high level security here without going into details. It's, it's multi-level. The customer will receive an email saying, you know, you, you've received a piece of mail today. And then the customer can log on to that secure website and they can see, you know, the image of that letter. Now, if they have a couple letters, uh, say one is from the Internal Revenue Service, which of course is very important. Uh, you know, the IRS has a very low sense of humor if they think you're ignoring them. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And you have a letter from Aunt Martha. Right. Uh, you know, and my apologies to anybody who has an Aunt Martha. But mm -hmm. So you want to know what the IRS has to say, but Aunt Martha can wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. So on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, a member of my staff, upon, uh, upon they receive a request, will open that one letter, and only that one letter, from the Internal Revenue Service or whoever they direct us to, and scan the contents of that letter for a small fee and put the contents on that secure web service. So again, our customer who could be anywhere in the world at that point, uh, they can see the letter that they've received from Internal Revenue and act accordingly. That is great because people don't want to wait. For something very for important, something important, it might be from yeah. a law firm, you know, with updates mm -hmm. to a case that they have going or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's important, you know, you know that, they, that they can see this mail on a very timely basis and they can act accordingly because so, sometimes time is of the essence. So America's Mailbox will handle all of your vehicle registration needs. Um, the transfer of title from, from whatever state you're, it's in now to South Dakota. And the, we're talking the, your camper and your motor and your motor home, any vehicle. your car. Yeah, any vehicle, anything with wheels on it. They'll handle that transfer. There are actually four dedicated people in America's mailbox that are just doing vehicle registration. And they're used to handling the complicated things like trusts and corporations. I don't think there's anyone else in the nation that provides this service. I'm certainly not aware of them. <laughs> and not only that, and then you mentioned insurance. Here. Well, they're again taking the, the one-stop operation into consideration. Uh, as I said, we're doing quite a few thousands of vehicle registrations here every year. Well, of course, people have to have insurance. So I started an insurance agency. So we have our own insurance agency here embedded within our company. And we work with major companies like you know, Progressive and Foremost and, and others. A lot of times people will call up even Progressive and Foremost and whatever, and they're asked the question, well, where do you garage your vehicles at at night? Our agents are specialty agents. We don't ask that question. And our customers travel all over the, you know, the country with their RVs, and sometimes uh, to Mexico and Canada as well. Mm -hmm. So they're not, you know, not gonna ask, where do you keep your vehicles garaged at? All right, so now let's talk about voting. How do you vote when you're on the road? Well, first of all, you will have to have your driver's license. Yeah, yeah you just go online, request a ballot be sent to you, and fill it out and send it back. Easy peasy, we voted. We just did it. <laughs> One of the cool things about being a, a resident at America's Mailbox is when you walk in the door, this happens. Hi, welcome home. And they truly are one-stop shopping. So when you go in person, know of course that you can stay in their hotel, you can stay in the campground, and of course you can pick your mail up in person. Yeah, we did that. Um, we mentioned earlier about the bike that we had shipped there. Rather than having them ship it to some location where we were, we just had them hold on to it until we got there. We picked it up on site. There are five plans ranging in price from $150 to $230. They are bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. We have the gold plan. In gold plans and above, they will sort your mail and remove junk mail and unwanted catalogs. If this video helped you make your decision to go with America's Mailbox, please tell them that we sent you. And by mentioning our name, you'll get $10 added to your postage account to help you get started. And what are your questions about full-time RV living? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to know how to get internet and cell service once you're out here on the road, we will see you in the next video about exactly that. See you next time.